Hey, welcome to Neon Mushroom, who is not me. I'm Trigger, on the stack. That's a magic joke. And thank you for tuning in again as we run full speed towards 2021. Again, for the month of November, we are trying different things here and there between my videos and Adrian's videos. And we really appreciate the feedback y'all have been giving about what works for you and what doesn't. Like that one comment from the one fellow who said that I wasn't keeping the card images up long enough. I see you. Anyways, for today's Commander gameplay footage, we have an aggressive pod for you. We have a lot of players that tend to pick up slow, grindy mid-range decks, so we thought it would be fun to try something a little bit faster. The game was so hot that literally 10 minutes after we finished recording, Aiden's basement had an electrical fire. That's why you see all the recording equipment behind me, in my basement. The fire started right around my thousands of dollars of computer recording equipment, and you have no idea how stressed out I was. In today's game, we first have a Kiri Fearless Voyager, piloted by Aiden. His opening hand includes a Plains, Clifftop Retreat, Fervent Champion, Open the Armory, Flawless Maneuver, Maul of the Skyclays, and Danitha Capuchin, Paragon. After that, we have Edgar Markov, piloted by Calvin. His opening hand has a Mountain, Graven Cairns, Vault of the Archangel, Oath Sworn Vampire, Soren Lord of Innistrad, Champion of Dusk, and Blood Artist. Then we have Rafik of the Many, piloted by Foley. His opening hand includes Hollowed Fountain, Hinterland Harbor, Fabled Passage, Island, Island, Plains, and Thassa God of the Sea. Finally, you know what's happening, Yuriko the Tiger's Shadow by Adrian. His opening hand includes a Command Tower, Flooded Strand, Gataxian Probe, Scheming Symmetry, Arcane Denial, and Moth Dust Changeling. Aiden won the die roll, so he'll open with a fresh Command Tower, followed by his Fervent Champion, which attacks Adrian for 1, dropping him to 39, and passing the turn. Calvin will simply drop a Mountain and pass. Fully will drop his Hollow Fountain tapped and pass the turn, and then Adrian will play his Command Tower, then pay life for Kataxian Probe targeting Aiden, dropping to 37, and then he'll cast Moth Dust Changeling off of the tower, passing the turn. Starting the second round, Aiden untaps, drops his planes, and taps out for Open the Armory, searching for Sword of Fire and Ice. He'll end the turn by committing, attacking Adrian of Champion again, dropping Adrian down to 36. Calvin will play his Grabbing Cairns, filtering in his Blood Artist, which will then trigger Edgar Markov's Eminence ability and create a 1-1 Vampire. He'll pass the turn. Fully will untap, play his Hinterland Harbor, and then tap it for Birds of Paradise, ending the turn. Adrian will untap, play and crack his Flooded Strand for an Island, dropping to 35, and then attack Aiden with Moth Dust Changeling to Ninjutsu and Yuriko. Aiden will take 1 Commander damage from Yuriko, dropping to 39, then Yuriko will trigger and reveal a familiar's ruse from the top of Adrian's library. Everybody else takes two, and Adrian passes the turn. Aiden, in round three, untaps, drops Clifftop Retreat, and casts Sword of Fire and Ice, equipping it to his champion for free with the champion's static ability. Aiden will attack Adrian for three, dropping him down to 32, then Sword will trigger, drawing Aiden a card and shocking the Blood Artist. Blood Artist's death triggers itself, and Aiden takes one, dropping him to 36, and bringing Calvin up to 39, ending the turn. Calvin will untap, drop Vault of the Archangel, and then cast Orzhov's Signet, followed by an Oath Sworn Vampire, triggering Eminence again. He'll attack Aiden for one with the original token, dropping Aiden to 35, then passes the turn. Foley will untap, play an Island, and then tap out for his commander Rafik, ending the turn. Adrian will untap and cast Scheming Symmetry, choosing Aiden for his schemes. Adrian will grab Seagate Restoration, Aiden will grab Sunforger, and then Adrian will attack Aiden for 1 with Yuriko, revealing that Seagate Restoration, dealing 7 to the pod. Aiden's at 27, Calvin's at 32, and Foley's at 31. Adrian will then play the Island half of Seagate untapped, dropping at 29, and then will play Sensei's Divining Top, ending the turn. Round 4, Aiden will untap, drop planes, then attack Adrian for 3 again, dropping Adrian to 26. Sword triggers, drawing Aiden a card, and he shocks the Bird of Paradise. He'll cast Mother of Runes before ending the turn. Calvin will untap, play Swamp, then tap out to cast Champion of Dusk. Eminence will trigger first, making another token, then Champion will enter the battlefield and draw Calvin 5 cards at the cost of 5 life, dropping him to 27. Calvin will attack Adrian for 4, dropping him to 22, then discard his hand down to size, pitching Alenda of the Dusk Rose. Foley will untap, play Fabled Passage, 
then attack Aiden with his Rafik for 8 total commander damage, dropping Aiden to 19. He'll crack the passage for a planes, and before ending the turn, Adrian will spin his sensei's top. Adrian will untap, play Drown Catacomb, and then enter combat and attack fully for 1, revealing Cryptic Command and dealing 4 to the pod. Aiden's at 15, Calvin's at 23, and Foley's at 26. Adrian will then pass the turn, leaving Cryptic Mana up. Round 5, Aiden will untap, drop a mountain, and then cast his commander Akiri, followed by a pair of Lightning Greaves, equipping them to Akiri. Before combat, Adrian will cast Cryptic Command, tapping out Aiden's team and drawing a card. At end of turn, Foley will cast Bant Charm to destroy Sword of Fire and Ice. Calvin will untap, ask for life totals, then collude with Foley to knock out someone. He'll play Sulphurous Springs, he'll cast Soren Lord of Innistrad, create an emblem to pump his team's power by 1, then swing all into Adrian for 14, dropping him to 8. Second main phase, Calvin will cast Indulgent Aristocrat and Knight of Ebon Legion, triggering Eminence twice. Knight will trigger at end step, growing with a plus 1 plus 1 counter, and Calvin's turn ends. Foley will untap. Uh Boy, do I have a deal for you. <laughs> End my life. <laughs> I don't want to live in this world anymore. <laughs> Cast Thassa, God of the Sea, then attack Adrian for lethal. Adrian responds by tapping top, praying for a snuff out, and fails. Adrian dies. Aiden opens round 6 by untapping and casting Sunforger, equipping it to Champion. Mother of Runes will give Champion protection from black, and then Aiden will attack Calvin with a Champion for 5, dropping him to 18 and Foley with Akiri for 3, dropping him to 23. Akiri will trigger twice, drawing Aiden 2 cards, and then Aiden will pass the turn. After playing a planes, Calvin will untap and tick Lord of Innistrad up, creating a 1-1 black vampire. Calvin bets that Foley can't kill him with commander damage, so he casts Soren Solemn Visitor, ticking up to give the board plus 1 plus 0 and lifelink. Champion of Dusk will attack Foley, representing 6 damage, and everything else will be thrown towards Aiden, representing 26. No responses to combat, Calvin will activate Indulgent Aristocrat, eating the new 1-1 token to give his board a plus 1 plus 1 counter, now representing 7 and 34 respectively. Aiden has no response and dies. Foley is now at 16, and Calvin gains 41 life up to 59. Foley untaps, scries with Thassa, and then casts Bastion Protector, giving Rafik plus 2 plus 2. He makes it unblockable with Thassa, and then attacks Calvin with Rafik for 12 commander damage, dropping him down to 47. On turn 7... Calvin, make it happen, baby. <laughs> tap, tap, tap him. Tap the pretty creatures. Here's finally Godless Shine. No! Here comes Big Daddy! Why? But, <laughs> why kidding. not? I'm just kidding. Just make two emblems. There's two of these now. We attack in. How big is everything? Let's, there let's do math. Let's do math, because math is fun. This guy triggers, so we get another counter. Oh, -ho -ho. so this is that. So two and two, plus what you see here. So these are five. Yeah. You're dead. <laughs> Yo, Calvin, you can have that game. I have a feeling you're gonna be able to edit that better than me based on your emotional reaction to your own game plan. <laughs> so, let's talk about it. Yuriko always impresses me whenever she's played. I believe Adrian has in the pipeline a true Yuriko victory but you don't need me to start gushing about how good she is. With that said, I believe the most interesting synergy we saw today did come from Yuriko. Adrian casts Scheming Symmetry to tutor Seagate Restoration to the top of his library, letting him both hit his land drops and deal massive damage to the board. Seagate Restoration is surprisingly one of the best cards in Yuriko for this reason. You can mystical tutor your mana now while getting in the beats, and it shouldn't be a surprise that Yuriko was the archenemy and taken down first. Akiri did everything she could to keep Yuriko down. Sword of Fire and Ice might have decided the game. It prevented Adrian from developing his usual board state of one toughness blue creatures because they just die. And with Sunforger, this is another solid showing from the Equipments Matter deck. Had Yuriko been a little quieter or Rafik been a little louder, Akiri might have been able to squeak into that overwhelming advantage we saw starting. Sunforger specifically is intensely powerful with Fervent Champion, and really should have earned Aiden an extra turn if we had the Teferi's protection in the list at that time. Rafik was a little quiet this game, but the potential was always there. I believe there's a game in the pipeline where Rafik actually knocks out a table with commander damage, but you don't need to see the kill happen to know it's there. 
He's not only 8 commander damage on his own, but he's only 7 power away at any moment in presenting that lethal 1 swing. This was the biggest risk of my last turn. No matter how high my life total got, Foley could have easily just slammed lethal in response. And then Edgar Markov. Turns out, free creature tokens are very good. There isn't even much to comment on. Every turn I cast a vampire, and the pod never really slowed me down. Only one creature I own died not on my terms, and that was the early blood artist. This kind of is what happens though with an aggressive pod. Whoever is the loudest will face lethal combat first. But afterwards, that somebody is going to sneak in with that unstoppable board state, and they always seem, in hindsight, much louder. Akiri and Yuriko are both just a little louder sooner. By the time I cast Champion of Dusk, Sword of Fire and Ice had already killed two creatures. In retrospect, I should have swung more at Foley in that final combat, because I'm aware that Teferi's protection exists, I, I play it in my signature deck. Had Sunforger been able to not only save Aiden, but prevent combat damage, I would have only been at 22 life, or 10 after Foley's combat, which would have easily been lethal with Akiri's board state. In fact, looking over the numbers now, I had precisely the damage to knock out both of them on the same turn. But I'll be honest, listening to the raw footage, Aiden was riding with a single extra life point that I cannot account for and I don't know where it came from. I'm, I'm blaming my poor combat decision on that, please don't at me. Again, the MVP was Sword of Fire and Ice, as Akiri did everything to keep Yuriko down, but opening the way for Edgar to swoop in. And if there's anything this pod taught me, it's that aggressive decks are fun. <laughs> You should play them more. Also, I'm really happy we have a game on the channel where Soren and Soren win the game. Did you did you know that I like Planeswalker? If you made it to the end of the video, comment down below what kind of theme pod you'd like to see more of. Or even better, let me know what aggressive deck I should show up to next recording. I'll let you know how it goes down on social media if I remember. Mardu Gain, rise up, and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.